We all love to play tabletop role-playing games like Dungeons and Dragons, Pathfinder, Lancer, Digimon Digital Adventure, and so many more. I've been playing for nearly two decades now, and sometimes it can feel like it's all up to the game master to make sure that things are fun. But it is also in the hands of all the players as well. Working with your fellow humans to make sure that everyone is having fun is up to everyone, not just one person. So here are five ways that you, as a player, can level up your gaming experience and make it even better, not just for yourself, but everyone at your table. Number one, understand that there is no main character. Now, there will be moments when you feel amazing, that everything seems to focus on you. Th these will naturally happen. But remember, you are among three, four, five, however many players that you have. You are not always the center of attention. I know it can be really hard to step back for a moment and let other people have the spotlight, have their moments to understand, but if you want them to be all the more exciting, then you need to give people their space. But sometimes, well wait, what if someone's just sitting over there, not talking or anything? Well it's up to the GM to engage, no, it's up to you as the player as well. What do they think of the most recent situation? What does the quiet one think about, do they think you know, there's an affair going on over here. Do they think these two are, you know, romantically engaged if you're, you know, more of a roleplay game? Or, you know, what does he think of that murder that could be, you know, questionably moral that the party just had to do? You know, anything. Just engage with your fellow players and bring them in. If you want to be one to try and hog the spotlight and instigate things, do so in a way that helps bring others in and be able to enjoy it as well. Don't make it all about yourself. It can be tempting, but trust me, if you make it easier for everyone to have fun at the table, you will have more fun as well. Number two, knowing what your character can do. Now, of course, everyone at some point is going to be new to a game. You won't always understand. Or, you know, you just picked up a new character and you're just starting to learn. We all understand that. You need to be patient and guide and help the new people and they may become great players themselves. But when you get to the 10th, 15th, 20th session and for the very basic things of what their character can do, no matter what game you're playing, you should know by now. When they're asking what's a d20, if you're playing a 20-sided die base system, there can be a problem there. This can bog everything down at every single time you're stopping, asking the party, what does this mean? What does this do? Going up to the GM with the rule book and asking, hey, what does this mean? Just read about it. Know what you can do. There are always actions that all characters can take and there's the ones that are that apply to you. Of course, some monster is going to come out of nowhere and completely change what you might want to do. But that happens and people will understand. But if you at least understand the basics, you will make everybody at the table happier, and you will keep things moving, making it all the better for you and everyone at the table. Number three, make sure to give your character some motivations. Now what does that mean? You can create this grand epic backstory of 80 pages long that I don't recommend doing this in all honesty. Most GMs will know and make a few bullet points to understand what about your character is given in a backstory. Unless they really need something for inspiration, they might dive deeper into it, but knowing just a few key things about your character is very important. But for every single game, you need to have a reason why your character is here, is with this party. Why did they leave whatever it was behind and come and join this party, this adventure? Now, you don't have to make it exactly like, oh, they knew a specific person, they knew these people in the party, but it's why it's such a trope in superheroes of, you know, a dead uncle, a dead parents, or things like that, that either they're out for revenge for their, their killer, they're, you know, using their words to guide them into the future and become better, but it doesn't always have to be that tragic. Were they some chef that was completely embarrassed by some other new chef that came into town, was forced out of their business? So now that they're out adventuring, trying to find newer, better ingredients so they can come back and shove it in that chef's face. Now, you know, that's not, you know, deep, gritty, dark 
backstory, but it doesn't have to be. But it gives him a motivation. It gives anything that the GM can use to dangle in front of a character and get them to do something. This can be knowledge, this can be finding some person, some item, anything like that that gives your character a clear motivation is something that will always help your GM move forward. And it can also help your fellow players in knowing what drives you. They can understand that, you know, if they hear something about this particular person or this particular beast that wrecked your village, they know that they can come to you and tell you, or know that you're about to fly off the handle when that comes and be able to work with you to calm you down and make sure that you don't accidentally go all murder hobo. Don't do that. That's never fun for anybody. But give them some motivations. So you, the GM, everybody at the table at least has a basic understanding of what they want. Sure, this can change over the course of the campaign with the main story possibly taking over that motivation, but give them something to start. A simple base point that can be as simple as a sentence that gets them going and being an adventurer. Number four, pay attention. Sorry, are you, are you still paying attention? Did you make it this far? If you made it this far in the video, make sure you like and uh, comment down below about some other tips that you have to other players and let me know what you think. But pay attention to what's going on. I understand the other player is engaging with the GM one-on-one -on -one and, you know, talking to the captain of the ship and you're off somewhere else. So you begin to become disconnected from the story for the moment or it's in combat and you just took your turn so you have a lot of time between your turns and pull out your phone unless you've agreed to this at the table don't do that you're showing that you are not invested you don't care what happens to the other players you don't care about the story of what happens in the combat and then when your turn does come back up again you have no idea what's going on and then have to take longer on your own turn if everyone is doing this, it is unbelievably frustrating that you have to tell them for the third, fourth time that it's their turn. Then they have to ask, oh wait, which monster is that? Who's that near me? Oh, you, you're down? It can just slow everything to a crawl. Not only because they're taking time on their turn, but you have to re-explain what's happened again. What just happened five minutes ago. Oh, it will drive players and GMs up a wall. So please, just be courteous, pay attention so that your turns can go faster, and then everyone's will go faster because everyone is paying attention and moving things forward. Again, as I've said, there will be suddenly the giant monster comes careening down from above and changes everything, so it might make you take more time on your turn. But as long as you're paying attention, it'll be that much easier to adapt to what is happening. So please, don't waste everybody's time, be courteous. And number five, respect everybody's consent and limits. Now, for some reason, I think this might be a controversial thing for people. I've heard a lot of discourse about this, but don't be a jerk to each other. This is a cooperative game. You're here to tell the story and have fun together. Especially if you have a session zero, which I have a video up here if you don't know what that is. Discuss what you are willing to experience in a campaign. Has there been bad things that happened to you as a child, so you don't want to see bad things happen to children in the campaign? Are you someone that doesn't want sexual content, or torture, or any other extreme things that can certainly happen in Dungeons & Dragons or any other tabletop that you're playing? With charm spells and people being unconscious all the time, they have no say in that moment what's happening to that character. But as a player, Make sure that you understand everyone's limits and abide by them. If someone is in a relationship and therefore doesn't want to touch on anything that is of a romantic nature in the campaign, or just doesn't want to anyway, even not in a relationship, then that's fine. Make sure you know this and don't push things onto other people that they don't want. If someone is quiet, you can go ahead and try to approach them and ask them, you know, hey, what do you think, and everything like we said before. But if for some reason they do not want to talk about something or do not want to engage in something, for whatever reason, as a player, respect that. 
don't push anything on them that would make them uncomfortable because this is a safe place. We're a bunch of usually grown-ups, sometimes not always grown-ups, playing a bunch of make-pretend to escape the real world and have some fun. Don't make it overly dramatic and terrible for anyone. That's not going to be fun for you or anyone else at the table. Make sure that this applies for players, game masters, anyone at the table. Know the limits of your fellow players and don't step on them. Make sure that you understand they're people too. And if you do keep stepping on these limits and make them extremely uncomfortable, they may ask you to leave or they may leave themselves. Because remember, if a group is just doing nothing but making you miserable and doing everything that you don't want, it may be time to find another group. Well, I hope that was helpful in five different ways that you can level up as a player in any tabletop RPG that you play. I try to keep these fairly generic so that it can apply to any tabletop that you play, whether it's the more popular ones or some of the more obscure ones. Let me know what you play down in the comments below. And as always, everyone, I hope you enjoyed. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe if you want to see more. And as always, everyone, remember to be awesome. The next one, take care. Bye-bye!